Good morning, PopTech. Thank you, Andrew. I'm very excited to present this work. This is the first time it's being shown. So this project is entitled, What We Are Saying. It was made with Rob Deeming and Ken Reisman. I'm Nicholas Felton. I'm a graphic designer and an information designer. And uh, recently, I've become fairly well known in certain circles for this project I made that I've called the Feltron Personal Annual Report. So in 2005, I summarized my year in this document that appeared online and was intended for friends and family to get an idea of the places I'd traveled, the music I'd been listening to, some of the food I'd eaten. And for surprising reasons, it traveled well outside those circles. And stockbrokers found it amusing, and design bloggers were entertained by it. So the following year, I created a print version of this report. And this, in this year, I set out to record all these metrics in greater detail and sent copies of this to anyone who requested one. In 2007, it grew to an even greater degree. And I printed 2,000 copies of this, actually found an audience who was willing to purchase it. Um, and there are strange metrics in here. I was curious about all the streets that I'd traveled down in New York. So this is a little map of all those routes. These are all the taxi routes. Average day, eating, drinking, dining, all these things are mapped out. And again, in 2008, it became increasingly elaborate. <laughs> Here you can see um, a map of everywhere that I traveled over the course of the year. And my primary interest in 2008 was in determining how far I'd traveled throughout the year. So on top of how far I walked, I tallied my subway trips, my flights, uh, the stray hayride, ski trips, up and down, so chairlifts and the distance down. And it became this document. And this has become increasingly popular and has actually turned into a web application called datum.com, which applies this methodology to the community. And you can count and communicate whatever you'd like to on the site. Now, Rob Deeming and Ken Reisman are a couple of very smart people I've met recently. They're researchers. Between them, they have philosophy degrees, mathematics degrees. Um, and they're very adept at using natural language processing and algorithmic methods. One of the things that Ken has created is a website called pluribo.com. And what this does is it will look at Amazon user reviews of products, and it can reduce them into a very concise statement that applies all the sentiments it's finding into a very short and digestible review. So what we decided to do was take this technology and apply it to America, to look at America as a product during one week in the summer of a pretty notable year in America's history. So July 27th to August 3rd is what we were investigating. Here you can see a look at the New York Times front pages. We started at noon on a Sunday and ended on noon the following Sunday. I don't know if you recognize anything, but sadly, this was the week in which Merce Cunningham died at age 90. Our lens was these different topics of interest. So we were analyzing the Times and other sources for these keywords. And if you look at the Times through this lens, you can see the healthcare headlines that percolate up to the top. So the sources we looked at are divided into two types. We considered user-generated content and media sources. So for our media sources, we have Daylife, which is an aggregate of major media headlines and the quotes that they use, um, as well as New York Times headlines. And for the user-generated, we have Twitter. We have uh, an aggregate of blogs and New York Times comments. The first thing we can do is we can look at a volume analysis of how much people were talking about different topics. And one of the things we found was this real limit to human interest and human conversation. So shockingly, health and healthcare comprised an average of 23% of the volume of this conversation. So this outweighs food, which we found very surprising. And you can see some exemplary tweets there that really talk about the vastness of the food conversation and the real specificity of healthcare during this week. If we bundle these into media sources and user sources, you can see this real disparity between the 
volume of conversation on the media side and the volume within user sources. So while it's pretty evenly distributed in the media, which is this column here, you can see that it's vastly outnumbered in our user sources. And this applies to healthcare as well. While it was 19% of media sources, we found 27% of user sources were talking about health and healthcare. And this gets divided into even uh, greater specificity in this slide. So these are all the um, media sources, and these are all the user sources. And you can see this real turbulence in how much people are talking about different topics on the user side, while in the media side, there's this real stark um, similarity. In food, you can see it's an even 12% through all these sources, while it blows up to 68% of the outside-in blogs. So there's a strong popularity of food blogging within outside-in. We can also start to look at the sentiment of what's being said in these headlines. So if we're looking at keywords, we can find positive and negative keywords. We can find negated positives, negated negatives, and emoticons, and start to weight all these to analyze the sentiment that's being conveyed. What we found was 73% of all the items we looked at were considered positive, which really throws into contrast how much we weigh negative statements or negative sentiment. This is a little bit of a complex slide, but essentially what we're doing is we're saying that if we take that 73% as our median line, we can look at what's more negative and what's more positive, and this will all balance up. So while healthcare was the greatest topic of conversation, the economy was the thing we felt most negative about, with 18% um, more negative average sentiment than the mean, while innovation was considered 15% more positive. Here we can also start to look at the media sources and biases within that. So on the whole, our media sources we found to be 4.5% more negative than this mean, while user sources were 2% more positive. So you can see this disparity between what the media is saying and what people are actually saying about the country. And when you split this up, um, apologies to Nick Bilton, but the New York Times articles we found to be 9% more negative than the average sentiment. And even within this media stack, you can see that the quotes which are what people are really saying, these are the real words, they were 5% more positive, um, while the headlines in New York Times articles are clustered in the negative end of the spectrum. Um, and finally, we can look at the terms being used. And um, we can see in the energy topic, the top three terms, green, solar, and oil, all these sources, but green and solar are elevated to the top of this pile. Innovation, interestingly enough, is only being seen uh, in computers and on the internet. So Microsoft, congratulations. You are the number one innovative term that we found with Google and Yahoo coming behind. But you know, it, it leaves open the doors for innovation in all these other places that people aren't considering or they're not talking about at the moment. And here we can compare the terms being used to describe these topics. So, <laughs> Interestingly enough, health and healthcare was, they were using six of the same terms, six of the top 10 terms that were used to describe healthcare were shared by all these different points of view. So this similar conversation is all talking with the same set of, um, set of words. And finally, this is the, the conversation that we found was happening. So the top five terms that were being used across all these categories, uh, people reform, Green schools and Obama, you know, sources of hope and hopefully for reimagining America. Thank you very much.